Can you see the real me? Can you? Can you?
Mongo. Duking it out. was a man of few words and many notes. His mother Queenie told me that by the age of three, he was standing on a table performing Al Jolson songs at a social club that was frequented by the family. This was the beginning of his public performance career, and John loved the attention. When he wasn't singing or entertaining the adults, he spent his time trying to perfect a suit of cardboard armor to indulge his childhood fascination with knights. A fascination, by the way, that he never outgrew. As a child, he used to build castles in the rubble of the bomb sites in London and played knights for hours, even though his cardboard armor made him look more like a robot than a knight. When John was 14, he was asked to play the trumpet in Teddy Fulliger's band. He was given a hand-me-down tuxedo and played with Fulliger every Saturday night. At 15, he was also performing and passing the hat in local pubs to raise a little extra money during the Christmas holidays. John soon traded in his trumpet for a bass and the moth-eaten tuxedo for some snappier stage clothes. They didn't call him Big Johnny Twinkle for nothing. John went on to change the face of bass guitar and revolutionized the role it played in modern music. He did for the bass what Jimi Hendrix did for guitar, and there isn't a bassist alive today that hasn't felt the everlasting effect of John Entwistle. But he was more than just a musician. He was also an artist. And he loved to draw, 
paint, and he even built models as a child. His art appears today on album covers and in galleries. John's humor still rings in the ears of anyone who came in contact with it. John was a very funny guy with an extremely dry sense of humor. He could make anyone laugh at any time and often chose the most awkward moments to do so. He could tell jokes for hours, and when the old standards ran out, he'd just start making up his own. If you asked him who his favorite bass player was, he'd respond, Me, of course. That was John. He was a fan of old classic period films like Ivanhoe and High Noon. John spent many Sundays with his son Christopher watching the classics and passing on his love of old films mixed with a bit of Buck Rogers. John was somewhat of an historian on the old American West. In fact, he knew more about that period in American history than most Americans do. He would always know when they were using the wrong gun in a Western movie. He'd point it out and say, that gun wasn't invented for another three years. He knew about these guns because he collected them, along with all sorts of period weaponry and, of course, knights in armor. He was very proud of the full suits of armor, swords, and shields that could be found throughout his house. John collected all sorts of things. In fact, he's still the only person I know that has all of the Marilyn Monroe collector plates. He collected trains, lighters, Disney porcelain, guitars, animated toys, teapots, rugs, art, the list goes on and on. He also loved dogs and had several of them. He even built them their own miniature estate that he named Dun Sniffin. He collected cars too, although he never learned to drive. He was asked once during an interview, what do you do with all those cars if you don't drive them? He replied, I drink in them. Deep sea fishing was one of his passions, and he cherished his vacations to warm, exotic places. He enjoyed good brandy, fine wine, and the occasional Cuban cigar. He could sit alone for hours doing a crossword puzzle, or spend the day with friends on a shoot in the countryside. He also enjoyed sitting by his koi pond, where he could always find peace even in the midst of turmoil. However, he hated the heron that kept stealing these expensive fish out of the pond when he wasn't there. John loved giving gifts. He enjoyed watching the expression on people's faces as they opened whatever he gave them. Sometimes the gift would be humorous and he would wait for you to get the joke. Other times he would touch your heart by turning up with the most thoughtful gift picked out just for you and carried halfway around the world. He once scoured all of the toy shops in the United States until he was able to replace a hard-to-find toy that was stolen from his son during a train ride. John looked forward to the holidays and had a great time decorating his home for Christmas. He would shop for Christmas presents year-round and then he'd spoil everyone that was close to him on Christmas Day. He was truly the definition of a friend. When he found out that an old friend of his was dying of cancer, he invited that friend and his family to stay in his house. He opened his home unconditionally and indefinitely in order to make an old friend comfortable in his final days. That's the kind of friend that John Entwistle was. John also did a lot for charity. Too much to even begin to address today, but one thing does stand out. John had a tour planned for his band during October 2001. After he heard about the disaster at the World Trade Center, John wanted to add a fundraiser to the band's schedule. We found out later that the concert for New York would fall right in the middle of John's tour. Rather than cancel a single date or disappoint a single fan, he worked out a way to do all the performances, including his own benefit. When The Who were finished performing at Madison Square Garden, John jumped in a car and was driven eight blocks uptown to perform again with his own band. I met John Entwistle on June 27, 1987, and he was a gift in my life, the likes of which I will never know again. He was the most gifted musician I have ever had the pleasure of playing with. He was my musical soulmate for 15 years. 
I was inspired by far more than just his talent. I was inspired by how he lived his life. No excuses and no apologies. He remained one of the most grounded people I have ever known despite his immense celebrity. John Entwistle was honest, sincere, and truly cared about his family, his friends, and his fans. He was one of the kindest people it has ever been my privilege to know. I've watched him stand in the rain and sign his name on anything until the last autograph was signed. Of course, then I had to listen to him complain for the next half hour about what the rain had done to his hair. I had the honor of calling him my bandmate, my writing partner, but above all these things, he was my friend. I loved him like a brother with all my heart, and I will miss him forever. I would like his fans to know that he loved them all very much, and he would, as he used to say, play at the opening of an envelope if they were there. I would like his family to know that while there is a breath in my body, I will continue to sing his praises. I say to you all, when it thunders, think of John Entwistle.
came from uh, the press wanting to stick me in a pigeonhole. And uh, Keith was the crazy one. Pete was the intelligent one with the big nose. And Roger was the glamorous singer. And, you know, all that was left in there, what can we call the bass player? Oh, he's the quiet one. I wasn't particularly quiet, but I, I kind of became quiet because I, I'd always been stuck in that pigeonhole. And, uh, I think it wasn't until I started doing my solo albums that I actually managed to break out of it. Um, the other nickname, the Ox, came from, not from how big I was, but uh, what I had the constitution of one. I could always seem to uh, eat or drink or do more than the rest of them. Art's not, art's not as important to me because the music's been, been my longest love, you know. I've been involved with that a lot more. I'm a much better bass player than I am an artist, so um, that's always important. But uh, I can't really see myself stopping uh, the art side of me because it, it, it's another side of me that I, I re rediscovered. And uh, I'm very happy, but I divide my time probably uh, six of the six of the year with the artwork and uh, fortu fortunately though I can sometimes combine the, mu the music with, with the art because when I'm, while I'm touring I can do art shows across America so we figure out um, where we're going to be playing that we could do an art show.